let's take a look at Pages on the iPad. Now, Pages has had an update um, since iPad OS 14 is released, and there's some slight changes to what things look like and some changes to things that you can do within the app. So I thought it'd be useful to give like a one-stop video that shows all of the different things. There are lots of other videos on my channel that look at the creative aspects of things that you can do with Pages, but this is just a tutorial to get you started. So let's jump into Pages and take a look at what we can do in the app. So when we first go into Pages, you'll notice that the screen might look a little bit different to what you're used to. We now have this sidebar navigation that allows you to access documents um, in a slightly different way. Um, and obviously we can still access our documents here. So we have access to our recents, access to shared documents. And if we want to look at just all of the file within everything uh, on the device, we can go to iCloud and go to Pages or we can go to on my iPad. And again, if you might have a pages file in here where you've stored things locally on your device. Now I'm gonna jump into that pages file and here's all those documents I've created. A second thing to just highlight that's changed slightly, um, we can now have access to organizing what this page looks like and how it flows. Um, it used to be that you needed to pull down the screen and it was a little bit hidden, I suppose, for people to be able to find. Now we have direct access to be able to create new folders. So if you want to put things into folders, keep yourself nice and organized. Um, or also the layout as well. So uh, standard view is that you have this grid view, which I think works well for me. However, if you want to change it to a list view, so it's more based on the text and you know when things were created, etc., um, or that column view where you know where those things were stored as well. So if you have a folder, you can tap into the folder and see what's in the folder as well. So again, different views for how you like to work um, within your pages setup yourself. I'm just gonna jump into a new document on my screen. So we can do this a couple of ways. We can either tap on the create document here or the plus along the top, both take us through to the template chooser. Now, again, if you're familiar with using uh, pages on an iPad, the template chooser is the same as you've seen it before. There are some new reports um, that you can choose and this is one thing that does get updated. Um, so check in regularly is the different kind of templates that you can use. But the templates are there to choose from absolutely anything from letter creation to creating certificates to making ebooks, etc. You also have this option along the bottom to create your own templates, and I'll show you how to do that when we go into pages into a document. But it just means that you know if there's something you use on a regular basis, you can create a template and it just means you can jump back into it. We also have the option along the top um, to go to our recent, so anything that you've used recently will be here, so the most commonly used ones you use. And also rather than scrolling down to find things, if you know exactly what you're looking for, there is a list across the top that you can just quickly go to to find the one that you want. Now I'm going to jump just into a blank document just to show what all of the buttons um, allow you to do on the device. Now I have a keyboard attached to mine, which is why the keyboard isn't showing up on the screen at the moment. It allows me to, to type directly onto the screen. However, if I detach that keyboard, you'll see that the virtual keyboard pops up as well. So I have um, access to all of those tools that you might be familiar with using. Let's just take a look at what the options across the top here mean. Uh, documents just takes me back a step. Just consider it your back button. It's going to take you back to all of your documents. This next one here is your view mode. So it changes how you can view the page that you're on. I can turn on the thumbnails, which gives me the ability to see down the side all of the different documents that I've got within this page. So rather than having to scroll through, I can see them in just a thumbnail along the side. Two page view, which just means that if it's a longer document, I can see the second page over here. Could be useful for editing. Certainly if you're adding things in here, you can see what it changes to the second page. It's also a different way to view those things. Word count, which is switched on, which you can see down the bottom here, highlights um, as zero words. There's nothing on the page at the moment. If I type, obviously words will add in. If I also tap on where it says zero words, you can change what it is you're looking at. So if I wanted to look at characters instead or paragraphs or the number of pages, I can change that setting and it will change for you down the bottom. We also have the ruler, which is this across the top here, useful for design, and we'll look at that in a second when we look at some examples of, of what you can do with pages. Um, but useful if you want to you know, make sure that everything is lined up neatly, you, you can use the rulers. It also obviously gives you your margins to the side, 
um, if you are printing things out, etc., or you just want to make sure you have that margin for professional documents that you might be creating. And the final thing is smart annotations, which I'll come to a little bit later when I look at adding in smart annotations. But fundamentally, if I had any smart annotations on the page, at this point I could switch them on or switch them off as well. So that's it in terms of the view option. The next one then is the, um, the table of contents. Now this is a really, really neat feature because it allows you, if you have long documents, to allow the user who might be looking at your document or to you to find things quickly in documents you've created to jump to specific sections within the page, just like a contents page. If I tap on edit, this allows me to choose which elements are going to be within that content page. So do I want the title to be part of the content page, subtitles, headings, etc. And again, I'm going to show you this within an actual document a little bit later as to what that looks like. But just to know that's what the icon is. And when it's turned on, it just means that you will have that quick hyperlink kind of style jump through to all of the different parts of your um, document that you're creating. And the last one on this side is the undo and redo. I haven't done anything on the page at the moment, but there's a back button here. That will undo anything I've done. And if I tap and hold it, it will actually give me a redo option, which at the moment, because I haven't typed anything, let's just type something in there. You'll see that I've got uh, the back option has lit up. If I type, hold it down, I also get the redo button. Okay, so that's your undo redo section over on the page here. So there we go, just the basic functions on this side. So let's now take a look at some of the functions over here. Now this first one is the paintbrush. This is where you're gonna do all your editing. Now if you're familiar with using word processing tools before, you might be familiar with seeing all of your editing tools across the top here. What's nice in pages is they've minimized how this looks on the screen to obviously maximize real estate for doing any work. And the edit functions differ depending on what you've selected. So I've only got text on the page at the moment. So if I select the text and tap edit, I can have all of the edit functions for the text. However, and I'll talk about the, the functions of this in a second, I'm going to add in a, a shape and that's selected. If I tap on the edit function, I get some additional options because it's not just a text box. It's also a shape that I might want to change the color of and change the arrangement of. So we'll, we'll talk about the shapes more in a second, but just to know that the, the paintbrush tool allows you to edit the selected thing that you're selecting and the functions change. It just means it minimizes the things you're doing and, and if I can edit it, the option is here. If I can't, the option doesn't even show up. So therefore it doesn't confuse matters. You know what you can do. So I'm gonna, I'll come back to this, like I said, when I look at some actual documents in a second. Let's move on to the plus icon. Um, by its very nature, this is where you can add anything to your document. So if I tap on the plus, there are some various things that we can add in. We've already looked at shapes. There is a whole world of shapes in here that you can play around with. Um, I do have to point you to, to a friend of mine, Sabe's um, video that he has created that's accessible on YouTube. I've put it in the description link below so you'll be able to get hold of that, where he looks at how you can get creative with shapes in pages um, as well as other um, Apple apps, Keynote and Numbers. So do advise you to check out his, but just to say there are a whole world of shapes in here that you can add in. And as we've seen already, you can then edit those shapes as well in lots of ways. Let's jump to this one though. This is the media tab. So this is a, all the different things that we can add in in terms of media to our pages document. First of all, photos or video. Important to highlight the video aspect here. It's a digital uh, creation tool, which means we can add in video. Which if we share it with someone, the video will play within the document. So anything that's on my device, um, photos or video. So that's something that's stored in the photos app on the device. So it could be something you've taken um, previously. I can access the camera directly from the app as well. So this is a, a real time saver for people. If I know I want to add in something um, because I'm doing something whilst I'm out and about and I'm creating a document and I've seen a picture that I want to add into my document, I can just add that in directly from the application. So tap on camera, it's going to open the camera app. You can take the photo and it will add it directly into pages. So it means I don't have to leave the application whilst I'm working. The next one is record audio. Great way to add in some additional elements. It might not be that you want to always have handwritten text um, or, or typed text on the page, but if I tap on record audio, it just gives me the ability to record my voice. So I can say things to maybe embellish a picture or to add some more content, or it might be that I'm more confident talking. When I tap stop, I can preview, I can edit, um, or I can insert. And if I insert, I just get this um, 
uh, icon on my page that then allows you know someone to be able to replay that audio message that I've left. So again, lots of uses for this um, for, for your own documentation that you're creating, but just useful to highlight that you can do that. Next one then is web video. This is a really, really nice touch because again, it just means that I don't have to put content into my document and then push people out of my document. You know, I, I kind of might want them to stay within my document, but I want some elements of, of you know, internet um, information. So what I'm gonna do here is tap on web video. You'll see you can add in videos from YouTube and Vimeo. If I jump to YouTube a second, and I'm just gonna copy a link to one of my videos just to show how this works. So let's grab that link and jump back to pages. And then I'm just gonna paste that link in there. It's gonna find that video. You'll see that it's found the video from YouTube. Tap insert, and then it adds it into the page as a, as a web clip, basically, which, which allows me to play the video within pages. It doesn't take me out of pages, so I'm gonna push me um, to YouTube or onto the internet. And where this is great is I might want you know, people watching uh, this video to have additional content over here. It might be questions to ask them or or prompts to something within the video. So I could create that over here. The video could be over here. It means they're not having to leave the application in order to watch that. It also means I don't have to actually put the entire video um, into the document, which obviously reduces the file size of that document on people's devices. Next one then is image gallery. This is a, a nice touch again, just thinking about space saving. You might be creating something on your device and you want to create like a how-to guide, so a series of photos. Traditionally, you might end up with just reams and reams of pages of pictures. I can add in an image gallery, which just allows me to have a slideshow. So here, if I tap on the plus, I can choose some photos, obviously take some new photos if I want to do it live. It could be that it's a, you know, you're documenting how to create something food-based and you take photos of each step. Um, but I'm just going to choose some photos from my device. So let's just choose some of these screenshots. And if I tap add, it's going to put these as a sequence. So tapping on the button on the side allows me to move through those pictures. So again, it just condenses what's on the page and just allows me to use that um, as part of the design of the work that I'm doing. You'll notice that it also has the option to add in captions. We'll look at that again from a design point of view um, a little bit later when we look at some other documents that have been created. So that's adding image galleries. We can then insert from anywhere on our device. So um, any other pages document I might have, I might have something else that I want to add in here. But I can also go back to, to other documents. It basically is your file management system. So if there's anything on my device that I think I want to use, again, I can find it within the insert from, including any sound files you might have from GarageBand, for example, um, just anything you've got on your device stored. The next one is quite a big one then. This is the drawing one. Um, and with iPad OS 14 and, and Scribble, there are some additional things that you can do in drawing, as well as the annotation that we mentioned before. So I'm gonna load up drawing. You can access this two ways. One is to tap on the plus and go to drawing, or two, if you have an Apple Pencil, you can just tap on the screen and you'll get these drawing tools appear across the bottom of the screen. Now let's go through each one of those. This first one here, this is Scribble. This is the new update in iPad OS 14, was in Notes at first, now is in Pages as well, and it just allows you to write on the screen and have that turn into text on your screen. You also have some controls here to edit those things. So let's say that I want to um, you know, go to the next line down, I've got that uh, enter button. I can also change the font style so if I want that font to be, uh, let's choose something which really stands out. So if I go to marker felt, and now I write on the screen again, just write hello, you'll see that that puts it into that font style for me. So again, I don't need to do that post editing, although I could. I can change that size of that font. So again, if I just go to next line down again, I'll just write hello again. You'll see that it gives it me in that larger font as well. So all of those functions that you might be used to in terms of your editing are there within your handwriting recognition as well. The other tools then, if I tap on this one, this is a pen tool. So here's my drawing place. So if I tap on the pen itself, I can change the thickness of the pen and I can change the opacity of the pen. And this one is just a simple pen line. The next one along is a pencil. So again, you have the same settings if you tap on the pencil. You can change the thickness um, and you can also see that this has that kind of different feel to it um, in terms of what it looks like so it's a bit you know grainier and then the next one is a crayon which again if i draw that it gives that different feel to, to 
the, the pen. Okay, so it just is that range of tools that you have. This next one is a fill tool. A couple of ways that you can use the fill tool. You can draw a shape with the fill tool and it will instantly fill it in. Or I could draw a shape with just the pen and then tap on the fill tool and, and tap on it to fill it in for you. So again, really, really useful tool enable for you to, to you know add those um, hand-drawn elements to the work that you're putting in. Next one is a rubber, no surprises. It just allows you to erase things. A couple of settings, you can erase it by pixels or you can erase the entire object just by tapping on it. This one is a crop tool, so it allows me to select the, the piece of work that I've done, move it around the screen. And then if I tap it again, you'll notice that there are some other things on here. So I can resize it, I can duplicate it, separate it from the other drawings. Um, I'm going to resize it just to show you what that does. So it allows you to then manipulate that piece of information. So really, really useful in that sense as well. And then the final one to look at is the annotation tool. So this one is, as we mentioned before, the ability to write over documents. So now you'll notice that the drawing pane has gone because I can use this annotation tool anywhere on the document. So let's say that I wanted to highlight some of the work up here. I can choose the highlighter. I might make it a little bit thicker and change the opacity, but it just means that I can highlight over that text. So again, good for digital marking, good for marking up a document to look for, for errors, etc. Or it could be that I want to use it as a pen, and again, I can change the thickness. Uh, and it might be that I'm underlining certain things or circling them, etc. Again, you've just got that tool that we, you would use if you were, you know, using pen and paper for this. You also can change the colour. So there's lots of colour options in here. So this is your kind of standard palette. But if I tap on the rainbow icon, there are lots of other colours I can add in here. And I can even create my own custom palette. So I know that if I like to use, um, you know, this colour here all the time, I can tap add. And it's going to create that as a shortcut here so that I don't need to find it each time. There's also Spectrum, so you can be really you know, clever with finding that exact colour you want. And also that really refined element, if you know the colour codes um, or the hex code for anything, you can find the exact colour. might be matching to brands that you might have um, as a school or a company or whatever it is that you're creating a document for. Final one is the colour picker at the top. So it could be that you want to choose a very specific colour. It could be that there's a colour in this picture that I want to use. If I tap on that and tap on the colour picker, I can move this and find the specific colour that I want. And then that's going to add that. And again, I can add that and make it one of my um, choices of colours that are always available to me uh, within this frame here. So there we go. So that's drawing. And then the final one um, is equations. If you are math, science, or you use equations in any way, it just means that you'll be able to add those equations into your documents using some of these additional tools down the bottom that might not be available on your keyboard. Um, but just if you're creating a document about some results that you've had and you need to add equations in, it just gives you that option to add those in as well. So there we go. Just different ways that you can add different things in using that plus icon. So moving on, this icon here is your collaboration. So it's a, the person said with the plus next to it. This one allows you to be able to share your files. So these are all the ways that you can share. It depends on what's on your advice and uh, device. And obviously you've got copy link in there if you want to copy the link. And one thing to highlight is the share options. You can choose whether it's people you invite, which means you know they have to have had the link directly from you, or anyone with the link, which means they could pass it on to other people. So again, thinking about how you might want to share the, the document and then do you want people to be able to make changes or just view your document now what this relates to is I'm going to be sharing this as a live document so if I share the link and then I change something the person with the link would have the most up-to-date version all time so obviously there's a real use for that if you just want to share the document um, standard and uh, as it is at this point and, and if I make any corrections the person receiving it wouldn't get the corrections that's in this more icon here the three dots so here I can just share a version of this. Um, and there, again, you can share it in various different ways using all of the different share kind of routes here. I can also export this in various formats. So again, if you're working with people that, that want to use this as a Word document, you can export it as Word, export it as an EPUB. And this is where if I've created a template here, I can create my own template. So imagine this was a, a newsletter and I've populated it as a newsletter, but I know that I'm gonna use the same template again or the same format again next time. I could export that as a pages template and that would be in my document um, template chooser for me to use and then I can just edit the pictures, edit the text. A few of the other options here then within the uh, more options. Um, smart annotation, that's just 
a similar way to be able to add the smart annotation rather than just tapping on the screen. I can go here, change tracking, which will be used to from, from other documents. Um, and document setup, which is something which just helps you just organize how the page is set up. Okay, so again, you know, do I want the color of the background to be the same? I can change the color of the background, etc. Headers, footers, all those other things, you know, very standard to, to a word processing tool. Presenter mode, I'm going to come back to um, in one because I'm going to go to an actual document I've created just to show you what presenter mode looks like. And then the final one is the ability to be able to publish to iBooks. So um, you can, or Apple Books, sorry. you So you can um, publish the things that you created. It can go to Apple's bookstore, um, the book app that's that's on your device. People would be able to download it then. So it creates audience for the work that you're creating. So again, just, just changes you know, the creation tool to to ability to have people consume some of the things that you're doing. And again, could be very useful for you depending on the setting that you're in. Okay, so let's take a look at that presenter mode and let's jump into another document that I've created um, on my device where there is, there is text already there just to show you the impact of how this works. So if I tap on the three dots and go to presenter mode, You'll see straight away it turns it into a teleprompter, which means that I can set this to have the screen scroll so that I can read the information. But it could be that I need it there because I'm reading a speech, I'm doing a session, presenting something on a video, and I want to have the text, um, but I also want to try to make eye contact with the, with the, the audience as well at the same time. So having a teleprompter can be a useful tool. A couple of the settings in here, the two A's, um, just some accessibility settings. I can make that text bigger or smaller, depending on you know my eyesight, how, how I need to, to um, engage with it. Change the color of the page, again, just to make it easier for me to read. Change the font. Change the text in general, so do I want it all caps locks or not? Change the spacing, etc. Again, just to make it readable for the person doing it. And then switch on auto scroll or not auto scroll and change the speed. Now this means when I tap the screen, it's going to start playing and I can just adjust that speed. So again, just a really, really useful way to utilize pages in a slightly different way to be able to you know, share presentations or whatever it might be. So presenter node, really, really cool. Now, whilst we're on this document, let's look at a couple of the other things. I just highlight some of those things that we mentioned before. One, you can see now that that character count is now showing all of the characters on the page. So if I just highlight this, it will also show the words, etc., paragraphs and pages. And if I want it to permanently just show words, I can change that setting here. So that's always going to be on the page. I do have three pages of writing. So if I go to two page view, you'll see that it just brings up those two pages side by side. So again, if I edit something here, I can see what that's changed over here as well. And if I turn on thumbnails, you'll see that all those three pages are highlighted down the side. I'm just gonna turn that one back off. So as we said before, this edit tool is a great place for being able to edit all of the information on your page. And there are some great things in here. Now I've got text on this page. I'll look at images and shapes a little bit later, but let's just take a look at how I want to edit this text. If I tap on the text itself that I want to edit and tap on the paintbrush, you'll see that I get these text edit options. Now they're familiar things in here, you know, changing the fonts, changing the size, color, etc. But some things that just to highlight that Pages does, which are really, really nice. This new one down the bottom here, Drop Cap, recently released um, back in July, I think it was. If I turn this on, it gives me the option to kind of stylize the start or, or actually any word which is in, but obviously you would probably put this at the start of a sentence and, and some pre kind of created style that you can choose in here to have a look at how you might want to set that out. And then also you have that option to set some of these yourself. So if I go to the drop cap options, you can change the, you know, the, the character style, the spacing, the background color in this case, because there's a color behind this, whether you want to have a border, etc. So again, some nice design features there for, for editing your work. So that's editing just text. If I also wanted to add in a title here, so let's drop this down and let's just say, uh, let's add in, oops, get my cursor on the screen. Let's just say we want to add in a title. If I select that text again and go into the paintbrush, up here, I, I don't want this to be part of the body. I want it to look like a title. So if I tap on here and choose title, it's instantly giving me that setting. And we'll have a look at this in a second in terms of what that does for the chapters. And I'm gonna go back, um, actually, yeah, bold's good. I wanna make that a little bit bigger. And then I can change the color, etc. in here. Now there's a couple of other options you can do. Yes, I can just change the color of this and have it in a, in a nice stylized way. 
I can also add in an image. So if I didn't want this to be just color, maybe I wanted an image in the background. I can go to choose photo, choose a choose something in here that maybe's got a nice, you know, color pattern to it. Um, I quite like this design icon, and you'll see you can just about make out the stars in the background of that. And again, if I made this bigger or or changed it to stretch, you can see how that sits in the background. Again, just working out in a way that works best for you. I'm going to leave it as that. And then the second thing that, that sometimes is hidden, actually, which is in the more section here. Lots of other things in here that you can choose from in terms of, you know, the style, character style, caps locks, all caps, etc. So very quickly being able to edit those things. This one here, the outline. So this is going to give an outline to that text. You can see instantly it's just added that blue outline. You can choose the style of the um, outline. Choose the colour. Just by playing around with that, you can see how that changes. Again, it's just a style um, a way of, of changing the text on the screen. So again, just useful to know it's there. How you use it is down to people from a design point of view. But again, just a useful thing to know that is on the screen. So now because we've got some document um, text on this, if I jump to the table of contents, you'll see here that we can now edit what this looks like. So let's say um, I don't want headings to be on there because I don't think I've got any headings, but I do want the title to be on there. Um, and maybe the subtitle. When I tap done, you'll see that I now have this accessibility because I've set it as um, the, the style of, of heading is going to show up. So now we need to think about, well, what can we do to change this? So if I change this text from body to subtitle, what this does is it's added that in as a section. So again, you know, this probably isn't the best example to show how to do this, maybe because I've, I've selected a whole section of the text here. But if you had an actual subtitle, so um, let's actually change this and call this introduction. Let's change this all back to the body. That introduction is now selected as the subtitle, so which means it's going to show up here as introduction. So again, I might go further down, um, and I, maybe I want this to be the next subtitle. So again, edit, change that from body to subtitle. And without having to do anything up here, it's now added that in as the next step. So again, there's lots and lots of different ways that you can, can play around with this just to allow that access to your document. And again, if I just want to add in a table of contents, um, it's just added that in for you. So again, if you, if I put this at the top, if I, my cursor was at the top of the page, it would add it where I want that table of contents. There we go. Just going to generate that for me and then add that in for me. So again, just quick shortcuts to be able to add those things into your page. So let's have a look at another document then. That, that was very text heavy. Let's have a look at one which is more about images and shapes, etc. This is a book. So this has come from the book template. Um, the slight addition here is to add new pages, I can add new templates directly using this plus down the bottom. Now that doesn't exist on all documents, it depends on the type of document you're choosing. In this case it's a book, which means I can have different pages. The, the previous version was free flowing. Within this then, this is an image, okay, so if I tap on the, the paintbrush now you'll see that I have different settings. I can change the colour, the style um, of how that is laid out. I can add in borders, shadows, reflections, lots and lots of things that you can add in, um, as well as titles and captions useful for from an accessibility point of view if I want extra information to be added to that picture. I can change the image itself, so instant alpha, which is a great thing if I don't want that blue colour, I can select that blue colour out and it's just going to make that see-through. Again, probably not the best picture to be doing this with. I'll add another one in in a second to show you instant alpha, but, but that's where it exists. It just allows you to edit those things. Um, and then obviously I can create this as a placeholder. So in this case, this is a, a standard kind of book outlay. Um, and some of the pages you'll see have got this placeholder. So it's a picture that you add in your own picture to. You might want to clear this as a placeholder and, and change something else as a placeholder, add your own picture in as a placeholder, etc. Just a design element. And again, check out the other videos on the channel for how you can do that in more detail. One thing to add in here is this description. This is to make your book accessible to all people. So imagine you were blind or partially sighted um, and I was I was looking at this book. Obviously, I can have the text read to me, but if there's a picture there, it's, it, it needs to know what's in the picture. So you would just add in uh, image of a cell with, and then you'd add in all the details, which just means that when somebody who was using the accessibility feature clicked on the image, it would tell them what's in the picture. Okay, so really, really useful thing to add in. 
And then the final one is to arrange. So if I want the picture to be on the top or behind the text, if I wanted to, to flip it horizontally, vertically, etc. Lots and lots of different options that you can do here. So let's have a look at that instant alpha. I'm going to add a photo and I'm going to choose this one here only because it's got a definite red colour here that I might want to get rid of. If I tap on the paintbrush, go to image, go to instant alpha, choose that red colour, slowly drag it, you'll see that percentage kind of builds up. Sometimes you have to do this a couple of times um, depending on how noisy the, the image is but that's pretty much got rid of all of that red let go and it's just taken that part of the, the picture out and obviously you know if you wanted to get rid of the background with people in or, or you wanted to get rid of the people and leave the background whatever it might be just a way that you can play around with that and it just means that you have that kind of see-through element so really really nice if you're doing some design features on your page now like I said that edit function appears depending on the thing that you've selected so again if I select on the text box I have those text box features that I can change. I can also manage the text. If I tap in the text itself, again, it changes the, the options that I have in here. So again, just really, really bespoke to the thing that it is that you're trying to change at all times. So there we go, a really, really quick overview um, of all the things that you can do in pages. The one last thing to say is when you start a, a or when you go into a document that you've already been in, you might notice that there's this icon at the top here. Sometimes it's in edit mode, which means that you can't change anything on the screen. I can select it, but I can't change anything. To edit it, you just obviously tap on edit. So just, just something that's been added in. It's a nice way to be able to you know, not mess up any documents that you might go into. So hopefully that's been of use. It's just some of the updates that exist within uh, pages for iPad. Please do leave some comments in the comment section below if this has been of use or if there's something else that you wanted to know about. And please do check out some of the other videos on the channel for some more tips and ideas about how to use pages in various creative ways.